today, everybody. There goes the microphone for Adam. Great start on this Monday morning, guys. As you know, this is the Blue Jays today, hey, so we're going to be talking everything Toronto Blue Jays baseball from this past series, this upcoming series, what's going on with the team, the roster moves in general, because there are going to be a lot of moves incoming for this Toronto Blue Jays squad. The team's supposed to be getting better. We're going to be getting guys mm -hmm. coming back off of the IL, which is absolutely crucial when you're going up against the Yankees and then the San Diego Padres on the weekend. And when you are in this just stacked AL East as we are right now, guys. So tons of stuff to yeah. discuss. I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog. Yeah, I'm your host, Adam Peddle, and we're going to get into the past series uh, in a little bit, guys, because uh, it was, I mean, overall, I know there's been a lot of highs and lows. If you were here on the Blue Jays uh, today, play by play and reaction on Friday, we were pretty low. I mean, when you're when you're having some drinks and you're losing twelve to four against the Rockies in the in the series opener, it doesn't feel good. Well, just but, call it like it is, dude. That was like one of the most fucking garbage games that I've watched all yeah, season long. Yeah, I mean, you can really pinpoint it. We're gonna get into it too. You can really pinpoint it on that whole Gosman start because after that, like once you take out Gosman after the so many innings he does go, you just pitch all your crap guys, which then it compiles and compiles and compiles. And the, you gotta give credit to the Rockies hitters too. Mm -hmm. They're they're hot. A lot of guys hitting over 300 on that team. And then the Blue Jays, I mean, the Blue Jays hitters did exactly what the Blue Jays hitters do, which is get you four runs in a game. So overall, that's going to be a talking, talking point we'll bring up later. But but hey, look, we came back. We won the series. We're 4-2 and two on the past week. Yeah. I will take that. Dude, it's kind of, it's just such a wild ride that we've been on in oh, our Blue Jays fandom with this core of guys. Because again, back in 2021, uh, you know, you, you, we would never have been a four-run team. Like yeah, that is a, that is a perfect evaluation right now. Like you yeah. can really boil this Toronto Blue Jays offense down to being like, you're gonna give me four runs, yeah. maybe, and, I'll, and I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll probably be happy. I'll probably be happy with <laughs> yeah. that, man. Just because we got you know La Maquina, and you yeah. know we should have Kevin Gosman, and right. we should have a good bullpen, and that bullpen actually is gonna be getting a lot better very soon, folks. Let's talk mm -hmm. first off about those roster moves that are gonna be incoming for this team, guys. Jordan Romano, Eric Swanson, we have not had them all season, but they should be coming back very soon. They should be. And this is a tweet right here by Ben Nicholson-Smith. Uh, this was yesterday saying before today's game, Jordan Romano told Arden Zwelling and me he's feeling good after pitching two and a third of an inning at AAA yesterday. He was in the bullpen. If you guys were watching the broadcast, he was hanging out with the team. And so was Alec Manoa. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and doesn't feel like he needs to uh, have a third rehab outing before returning to the Toronto Blue Jays. That's very good. You know, they, they typically do about like every other day with a rehab start for a, a relief pitcher. So maybe that could be something soon coming for him. Maybe something in this series. And he also goes on to say that Eric Swanson is also close to returning. Not much details there, but we also heard on the broadcast that Eric Swanson, there's rumors that he could be as back as early as today. We were hoping to get something before this show. Nothing has come out yet. And my God, do the Blue Jays need it because A, they got a great series, a big series coming up against the Yankees at home. But B, we need the help as much as possible with this pitching staff. And it, and it does start with the bullpen too. 100%, dude. Uh, especially when you got somebody like Tim Mesa right now who isn't necessarily looking like the Tim Mesa that we all expected that we were going to get. Bringing in an Eric Swanson, bringing back a Jordan Romano, a locked-in closer, that is absolutely crucial for this team. Now, I will say... Some of the guys that have been filling in in their stead have been doing an exceptional job so far. Hats off to Nate Pearson, who yeah, has not yeah, let in a real. single run yet. And then hats off to Jimmy freaking Fracken Garcia, oh my dude. God. This guy looks like a different, this, he just looks like a different human being this year. I don't know what the hell he was doing this offseason, the training that he was on, the regiment that he was doing. Whatever he was doing in the offseason, though, everyone needs to do that. Because it is, it was working, and it is phenomenal so far. Go look at Jimmy Garcia's baseball savant, and look at this basketball velocity throughout the years. It is a roller coaster that keeps going up. Yeah, and he's one of those guys where you can really point to and be like, "You might be just a late bloomer." And I know that we've said in the past that Jimmy Garcia is an up and down roller coaster, but it feels like his up and down continues to go up. And, and I'm very appreciative, and I'm ready for that Jimmy Garcia season this year that's going to be good because last year the ERA wasn't so good. He was kind of shaky. When we first got him, you're a reliable guy. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting that other year, with the every other year kind of thing with Jimmy where this could be one of his best seasons ever, and I'm very happy because we lost Jordan Hicks this offseason, and people are wondering where the hell are the Blue Jays going to get this you know, other back-end closer or, or setup guy that's going to be very dominant. 
I think Jimmy's your man. But you made a great point about Nate Pearson, too. I wanted to pivot off that because, yes, we're going to bring all these guys back, Eric Swanson, Jordan Mono, but Nate Pearson's going to be on the chopping block just because he's Nate Pearson, and and, and it's unfortunate because he hasn't given up a run yet. I, I know, man. I mean, uh, shout-out to Matt Needham, who's saying Pearson looks like he's finally breaking out, and I'm <laughs> no kidding, dude. Like, yeah. This actually looks like the guy that we all hoped that we were going to get out of the pen because just in theory, you know, looking at somebody who gasses it up to 100 – that should be somebody who is feared in the bullpen. We're talking about the Jordan Hicks of the world. We're now talking about the Jimmy Garcias of the world, right? And, like, when they are on their stuff, they are effectively unhittable. That's what Nate Pearson is doing right now. I mean, we've been kind of flirting and going back and forth with the idea that is there any way that he could potentially stay on this team when these guys come back? The only other guy to me that could maybe get sent down is a Henesis Cabrera, but I know that you were bringing up the point that, well, he's a lefty and we don't have that many lefties in yeah. the pen, and that is absolutely a factor. I guess it's, it just comes yeah. down to, like, John Schneider and the management. Like, what what do you value more? Do you want to keep the guy who has zero earned runs so far, or, you know, do, do you want the, the specific arm for a specific situation? Tough to say. Yeah, and like especially with Tim Mesa right now, it's a tougher decision because he, he did have one good outing. He had a bounce back outing after giving up a, a lot, um, you know, against the uh, Seattle Mariners. He had one good bounce back. So it's like, okay, you know, Tim's not exactly, you know, himself right now, and he's our other lefty. So, you, you know, you want to keep maybe a little bit of options. So you're not pigeonholed and always pitching Tim when he's just mm-hmm. kind of trying to figure it out right now. Uh, it does suck. But the good thing is Nate Pearson, one option remaining on his contract. So you can send him down one more time. After that, then there become some questions. Well, what do you do with the guy? Um, it's one of those things where, look, uh, you know, it took him so long to get to this point. It's unfortunate that you had to burn all those options when he just wasn't ready and just was injured and, and dealing with uh, struggling uh, command issues. But, hey, it is what it is. But we got one more option. We can send him back down. He's, he would definitely be the next man up if something were to happen, injury or underperformance in that back. And I'll also say as well, folks, because I know there's a lot of people in here saying, don't send him down. He's finally figuring it out. I wouldn't be 100% shocked if there's someone that we're not even talking about. I mean, oh, like, yeah, right. like I, I wouldn't just because he's doing so good at baseball. Like, if he even had, like, one or two earned runs so far, it's like, okay, well, now you can make an argument. But the guy has just been lights out. So I do still think he's probably the guy, but I wouldn't be 100% shocked if somehow someone else that we're not even talking about enters okay. into the conversation. Throwing it out. Let, let's throw out a name. Like We got the bullpen right here. I was going to bring this up a little bit later, but we screw it. We got all the names right here for the guys. Um, you know that you're going to have Mitch White gone. Uh, he, I mean, it's obvious. Mitch, Mitch White's, White's go. absolutely we, out of here. We already yeah. have two long relief guys. Mitch White's gone. What about you put Bowden down to AAA? Because mm. he's struggling right now. Even when he came in relief for Yarrell, which we'll get to a little bit later in the mm-hmm. show, he was struggling. What if you send down Bowden? get himself uh, sorted out, and you keep Nate Pearson up there. Thoughts on that? Well, okay, that's that's a great suggestion, too, because first off, Yariel Rodriguez, we're going to talk about him in a mm-hmm. bit. That guy looked really damn good at baseball. Mm-hmm. He looks like in the future, and maybe even sooner than any of us expected, he could be locked in as a starter for these Toronto Blue Jays. It really just comes down to how much he can be built up. The guy went 3.2 innings in his debut, only giving up one earned run. And I, I expect that that is just going to continue to go up and up and up as the season progresses. But Nate Pearson, we've seen that guy give you a little bit of length before. Maybe there's a reality where, okay, well, Bowden Francis is struggling right now. He goes down. You bring up, you know, Eric Swanson and Jordan Romano. And now mm-hmm. Nate Pearson, he kind of becomes that piggyback off of Yariel Rodriguez. I'll throw out another name that's actually been doing it for us last year a lot is Trevor Richards. He he can go to, he can go there three go. if need be. I mean, he has the ability. Yeah, you're losing a lot of length in that bullpen, but you're hoping that maybe some guys will get built up a little bit better. Kevin Gosman's a name. You're hoping you know, maybe he can give you some length. But Bowden Francis, you're not going to DFA him. You get send him as an option. You can always bring him back later. Maybe figure something out. Dude, I think I like that. I think I like that yeah. more than sending Pearson down. Because yeah. at the end of the day, like we've been getting on John Schneider consistently about using the eyeball, right? Mm-hmm. Using your eyeball. You come in with a pre-existing plan. Your pre-existing plan is Bowden Francis is going to be our dude. Right. Nate Pearson is going to be sent down. But so far, and I understand that it's still very early. So far. Bowden Francis just is not getting it done. And every time he's out there, I really want the best for the I kid. Really There's do. nothing personal. Me too. But every time he's out there, he's giving up burned runs. You know, yeah. so, so even yeah. though you're, you're saying, well, you're losing length in that bullpen, you're not losing any quality length. That's true. Because That's true. the length is going to be with earned runs attached to it. So mm-hmm. I guess, you know, from my standpoint, and I still understand that this is early, 
Maybe you got to use your eyeball here and go, Nate Pearson's dominant. He's looking like the guy that we all hoped and expected him to be. Bowden Francis, even though we're still not off the train yet, mm -hmm. maybe he's a bit more of a work in progress. Uh, send him down. Keep Nate here. Bring up your two big boys in Swanee and Romano. Yeah, yeah. And the, the key thing there to cap that off is, like, you need more length out of that starting rotation. And it's been a little bit shaky. You know, obviously, Yariel's still getting built, built up. But you got to hope Gosman gives you something. And we'll, we'll get into that much later, guys. But before we move on, I'm going to talk, talk about some other guys mm -hmm. that could be coming up with the Jays very soon. On the position player side of things, Danny Jansen. I mean, hell, I wanted him this weekend. Yeah. Danny Jansen, he's got to come up and play against the Yankees. A, he's got great numbers against the Yankees. But B, you look over at what Alejandro Kirk's doing. And, you know, Joe Siddles echoed it. I echoed it on the show multiple times at this point. Like, you can't have him play that many games. He had a great game on Sunday. Good for him. He had two rest days in the last four days, so that will probably help him. But you need more rest days. You want to, you want to play Brian Servant all the time. you got to bring back Danny Jansen, split that catching position to create more value out of that spot. we got to get Dirty Hands back because he's been popping off in Buffalo too. Well, he should be coming back very soon. Also, quick happy birthday to yes. Dirty Hands, Dan, everybody. It is his birthday today. <laughs> Guy's turning 29 years old. One of the legends of the Toronto Blue Jays behind the dish. But he's been phenomenal in Buffalo and in the small sample size that's down there. And Alejandro Kirk, so far this season, just hasn't been that great with the Toronto Blue Jays. Mm -hmm. We are getting ran on all the time, which mm -hmm. I can't 100% blame on Kirk, but he's no. certainly not helping the situation. And offensively speaking, it's just not there right now. Now, I, I will uh, you know, credit that Sunday game because those at-bats on Sunday, the walks he was taking, the hits that he was getting, the guy had a perfect game. He was on base four out of four times. He yeah. took two walks, yeah. he got two singles. Those are the type of games that we like from Alejandro Kirk. And every single one of those at-bats, it was completely warranted. He fought through it. He took the bad pitches. He fouled off the good ones. And then he got himself some base knocks and then also took some walks, too. So maybe that is uh, reflective of him getting a day off, getting some off yeah, days I think because so. we had Thursday off as well. And I hope that that's going to continue when you get Dirty Hands Jansen back up. But we don't have any slug coming from the catching position right now. And the run, you know, the stealing and all of that stuff. I know that Danny is Danny, like not yeah. necessarily as uh, you know uh, better than Alejandro Kirk, but we got to figure that shit out right now. And Alejandro Kirk's just continuing to struggle back there. I really want to see Dirty Hands up this week, hopefully in mm -hmm. the next couple days. I think that's what's going to happen. But clearly, the Toronto Blue Jays need it. Yeah, I want to I want to talk about that uh, running thing because yeah, like you said, Dirty Hands ain't going to help that game. They're actually very similar. Like Joe Siddle again, shout out to him. He broke it down. Um, they're very similar in terms of the pop time going down and, and the arm strength and the release, everything. So I think it's got to be a more on the pitcher thing. And like, I, I'm not singling out Nate Pearson here mm -hmm. because, but Nate Pearson's a great example. He doesn't even look over Kevin Gosman. I mean, I know it's early. He's trying to figure it out right now. He's not even looking over at the runners right now. You got to be able to, to be able to limit the, the stolen base threat, whether it be a slide step, whether it be holding the ball a little bit longer, you have to do something to, to disrupt the timing of that runner and we're just not doing it so yes you got to help out kirk to getting the ball faster so we can get the ball down there but you also do your job as a pitcher to disrupt the timing to maybe give us another shot did we miss something last year like like was this a, was this as much of a problem last year and we just didn't pick up on it because i feel like yeah, this season this year, in particular it is really yeah. standing out to me as being just a full achilles heel we have no answer for it i think we've caught somebody stealing twice yeah maybe and we've gotten stolen on i would argue probably at this oh, point God, i'm just guessing like many. double digit times probably too many, too many. you know but a, a, a stupid amount of times it feels like this year especially this is a big problem maybe it was like you know last year we had the rule change so everyone just kind of was doing it and then everyone realized oh wait a minute the toronto blue they jays suck. are really bad <laughs> yeah, <like. laughs> let's keep going yeah. and, and they're gonna keep doing it so you got to try some other moves maybe and and i you know kirk threw an error the other day, uh, actually, it was on Sunday. Yes. Uh, but you also got to do that. But you got to execute it right. You got, you know, you got to have some pickoffs going down to first to keep the base runners honest. Incorporating that, incorporating pickoffs at second base, we've been doing that. But you got to keep doing that. You can't forget about it because, and, you, and when you do those like kind of like sneaky pickoff moves right, with the catcher throwing down to first, you got to be able to execute. You can't throw errors because that's going to cost you. Hundred percent, dude. And that we've seen that time and time again. So obviously, the bullpen additions that's going to be crucial. Dirty hands, Jansen returning. That is also mm -hmm. going to be big for this team as well. Shout out to everybody who's watching right now. Guys, if you haven't already done so, please 
hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, everybody. We're going to be live for Tuesday's game and Wednesday's game against the New York Yankees. We're taking tonight off of Tuesday and Wednesday. You're going to see Gosman. You're going to see Kikuchi. It's going to be a – this is an important series for the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah. Uh, we are still at home. We got our asses whooped by the New York Yankees the last time that we were up against them. We're going to break that series down in full a little bit later in this video. But first things first, let's take a look back at this Colorado Rockies series. Mm -hmm. We mentioned it off the top of this show. Friday night, that was horrible. Kevin Gosman, not a very good game mm -hmm. at all. I mean, I think everybody is hoping and expecting that he is going to bounce back. I think that you could also make an argument that having Danny Jansen back, that could be something Potentially. That, that could help Kevin Gosman. But the fact of the matter is, the velo's down, the location's not great right now, the, the sequencing isn't there. What's going on with Kevin Gosman? Should we be mm. concerned? Yeah, um, I'm going to say no. All right? And I know I've said this about Manoa last year, but I'm going to say no, not yet. Even Gosman brings it up here. This should be his eighth start when he's healthy in spring training. This should be his eighth start of the old, you know, 2024 season against competitive baseball. Uh, it's not. That was his fourth start. He was rushed back, and we were all optimistic and excited, and I was too, especially in Tampa. He dominated and looked good. But then you you got to have some rough outings along the way while you're getting built up. Mm -hmm. And so technically, right now, going into his fifth start against the Yankees, fifth start of the overall 2024 season, that should be his opening day start or opening series start. Mm -hmm. So that should give us a better idea. And even then, you could still get roughed up and look bad. I mean, look at Chris Bassett, two bad starts at the beginning of the year. You know, so there's going to be an entire month of baseball that you're going to see Chris, uh, Chris uh, Kevin Gosman, excuse me, get roughed up. And, and his stuff is just getting warmed up. And I like that point you made, too, about Danny Jason. There could be a factor there as well mm -hmm. because he said, too, I don't feel like I'm throwing enough fastballs. And he's not. He's actually throwing his fastball a lot less so far this season. Maybe there's a game calling thing. Maybe there's a sequence thing that Jansen is just more familiar with. So I'm not worried right now. This for me is extended spring training. Yeah, it sucks that we're getting beat up on these games, especially 12 to 4 against the Rockies. Mm -hmm. But this is just part of the early season grind, and I'm not going to overreact just yet. Well, let's take a look quickly at some of the saber metrics and the numbers for Kevin Gosman. Obviously, they're not super pretty right now, guys. Fastball velocity is down it's down by roughly 1.7 miles per hour uh, from last year in fact all of his three pitches are down rather significantly maybe that's a factor of the, mm -hmm. you know him still warming up and getting there expected era uh you know they do some math problems and figure it out <laughs> we know it was going to be bad it's You're in right. the bottom one percent of the league he's getting slugged like crazy he's getting hit off like crazy uh and, and right now it's just not working for him so mm -hmm. i don't know if that's gonna get uh fixed with a little bit more velocity frankly i think that you know maybe we're just not necessarily executing all of our spots right that's now right. and the sequencing yeah. isn't there so i'm hoping i'm kind of in the same boat as you like i'm not overly concerned right now obviously there is a little bit of ptsd because we did watch kind of something similar happen with alec manoa but right. they are two very very different players in the sense that you know cosman is a veteran he's been in this league for think like I, over a decade at this right, point so right. he's been around the block he's had rough stretches before i do anticipate that the guy is going to bounce back i would have loved to see him come out and do a little bit better than what he's doing right now but obviously you know it's uh, we're dealing with some growing pains and i mean shout out to jose barrios uh, yeah. for picking up the slack while yeah. our quote-unquote ace kevin gosman is going through something yeah it's and and that's what it is and, and again to reiterate guys that game on friday sucked but Look, if you had Jose Barrios there, um, we might win that game. Well, we probably, yeah. We yeah, probably we, we probably win that game, right? Like, so it's it's very different. Like, and, and I'm not worried about this stuff after the fact, because we clearly waved the white flag when we had Espino come out after, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, yeah, we were giving that game up in like the six, yeah. you know? So it, exactly, it was, right? it was a tough one. <laughs> it was tough, it was tough. But Kevin Gosman, he should be fine. Don't think, don't look into the numbers too much right now. Consider it spring training numbers. And, and honestly, consider it spring training numbers, but you're facing the toughest lineups every day. So at, a harder spring training. At what point would you start to get, you know, relatively well, concerned uh, for the course of the whole season? About mid-May. Because, again, mid -May, like yeah. April's going to be – the end of April's going to be, okay, we got our eight starts in. We're, we're cooking a little bit here. And if he continues it into May, now I'm getting worried. Well, I would – so here's, here's my thing. I, I agree with you. But at the same point, I would love to see at least one quality start 
in April. For you know sure. what I mean? Yeah, because like uh, I'll be honest, if we yeah. get through all of April and every single one is we're getting chased in the first, we're getting chased yeah. in the second. Yeah. That's cause for concern. If you have a couple outings in there, though, where it's like you go five, you give up two. Yeah. Okay, well, now we're building on something. Exactly. We're, we're getting better. That's kind of where I was at, right? You can kind of give a little bit of – you have a bad start here, a great start here, a bad start here. Mm-hmm. Like, you can be inconsistent. If you were doing that until mid-May, then I'm like, okay, like, now we're starting to see, like, this is mm-hmm. what you're becoming. And it, it does suck. I mean, we've seen injuries and not showing up to spring training on time, play guy seasons going forward, but Noah's a great example last year where he was dealing with an injury. Even though he played in spring training, he was literally dealing with an injury and wasn't built up actually proper Hmm. through it. Alejandro Kirk missing it because of the birth of his kid. So, like, that's another example right there. I mean, hell, look around the league right now. Blake Snell's getting absolutely shelled, and he's he's had two starts. I think that that would happen. That's his spring training. Hmm. He's still in spring training right now, so you got to give him a – you got to give Gosman a little bit more time. Yeah, 100%, guys. Let's move over to that second game where we saw Yoriel Rodriguez take the bump for the first time in Mm -hmm. the MLB. Now, this was a guy who, same conversation was being had, right? He's got to get warmed up. He's got to get going. Don't expect a whole lot because he's never been in the MLB. He didn't pitch last year, blah, blah, blah. This guy was great, okay? He said, shut up, everybody. (laughs) I want to play baseball. I want to be a starter in the MLB. The guy goes 3.2 innings. Uh, he gave up two walks, gave up four hits, but large in part, it was a quality start for this guy with only one earned run. Uh, something to build off of for sure. Yeah, and, and again, like, I don't want to, just like it's his extended spring training, I'm not going to get too crazy about it. I look good, right? He definitely looked good. And I think part of this fact is, you know, the book isn't out on him yet. Like, people are like, well, what does this guy have? You know, he's got two different uh, uh, breaking balls, a curveball, a, a slider, mm-hmm. different kind of releases. You know, he's got great velocity. You love to see that from the guy. Uh, but he really only relied on two pitches in that start. So this, for me, felt like, again, another extended spring training. He looked very good. And I'm excited to see what he can do. Now, what's the expectation moving forward from him? You know, we were talking a little bit earlier about Bowden Francis. And I think, you know, based on the way that, the, you know, you kind of manage the team, if you didn't have any bullpen worries or like, sending guys down, what you do is you'd ride with Yariel and then bow in behind him, you know, to give him a little bit more length or somebody else to give him a little bit more length because, yeah, he's not going to give you five, six innings his next time out. Mm. He might give you four. He might give you four and a third. Like, that would be exceptional. That would be great, yeah. Maybe he gave you four and a third. But I'm, I'm excited to see, and I didn't expect him to come up this early, but I'm glad he's here because I think he's giving a little bit more life to the Jays that we haven't seen in a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Like, bringing in these new faces, like, okay, yeah, Justin Turner, uh, Yario Rodriguez, David Schneider, like these guys are bringing life to these Jays that the guys at the core, hashtag to the core, are not bringing. And I'm all for it. 100%, dude. And I think that that in itself is its own conversation, right? Yeah. Like when you do look at this team and we do look at the guys who are doing it right now, a lot of them are players that we weren't even really talking about in spring no. training no. or in the offseason. The whole conversation back then was, well, Vlad needs an extension and he's going to be in for a big year in his arbitration. And, and you know, well, George Springer's going to bounce back. And, well, obviously, Bo, Bo Bichette's <laughs> going to lead the league in hits, you know? Like, yeah. well, those boys are not getting it done right now, folks. I do hope and anticipate that they're going to pick it up eventually. But most of the guys who are doing it is the bottom of the order, is the Ernie mm-hmm. Clements and the David Schneiders and the Kevin Isaiah kiner Falepa, the Kevin Vigios <laughs> and the Justin Turners. And it starts to beg the question... At what point do you want to continue to add these new faces in, right? Because you got Yariel Rodriguez, and you brought him up, and he looks good. And, you know, hopefully Mm -hmm. that continues. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we got to see more. But you also got in those minor leagues a couple names that we've been talking about for time. I'm bringing up Aurelvis Martinez. I'm bringing up Addison Mm -hmm. Barger specifically. They were highlighting them on Sportsnet just yesterday in uh, on the Sunday game. Both of them with OPSs right now. Over 850, they're hitting with a lot of pop. They look like they are ready. They look like they belong to be on an MLB roster. And the Toronto Blue Jays, you're in a situation where it's kind of difficult because your core and your big guys aren't doing it. And you're obviously not going to send down Guerrero or send down Bo or anything like that. But, you know, the guys that you would send down – for Barger mm-hmm. and, and you know, or Elvis Martinez and these top prospects that you have, well, those guys are actually doing it. And they and they right. feel like they also belong here, yeah. too. So what do you do if you're the Jays? If personalities and feelings don't matter and, and contracts don't matter and statuses don't matter and le- all that, 
you, you, you get rid of Bo Bichette. You get rid of Vladimir <laughs> Guerrero Jr. You're like, of course. Like, oh, we got these shortstops popping off in the miles. Let's bring these guys up and let's get all these guys on the bench, get them full playing time. But it's it just will never happen. I mean, like, you're never going to bench Bo Bichette full time. Well, you just never will. And, and also, also, too, man, like, if we're not going to overreact about Kevin Gosman, which yeah. we shouldn't, we also can't overreact Absolutely about Bo Bichette not. or Vladimir Guerrero Jr. or George Springer right now. Yes, they are off to very cold, you know, slow starts. But we've seen these guys thrive Absolutely. in the MLB before. They should get better. I think that, you know, you know similarly to, to, to Gosman, right, like for me anyways, uh, it's one of those conversations where, well, and I, I even give Boba Shett like a longer leash. Like I'm, I'm thinking oh, yeah. if he is like still struggling, like heavily struggling in like mid-June, then you can start to actually have a conversation about like, hey, what is going on with this guy right mm-hmm. now? What's mm-hmm. happening with this, with this swing? But you know the problem is he's got such a pedigree that like you just yeah. you got to keep him there you got to keep Guerrero there you got to keep Springer there you and... you, you start Bobichet every single day this year no matter what he does like unless he's batting like one hundred for real that, but like if he's batting low two hundreds you play him every single day yeah like it, it's just you just do not bench that guy you do not bench Vladimir Guerrero Jr. maybe one day I mean I was I was getting frustrated in the live stream like one day sure as a statement but you you got to put him right back or else you're gonna get fired as a manager you mm-hmm. can't bench those guys right so that brings the question up. Well, what do you do with these guys in the minors? It's it is unfortunate. I mean, it's a good 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 uh, problem to have, mm-hmm. right? You have all these guys that are on the bench coming off and playing a little bit of third, playing a little bit of second base uh, that are doing very well on the Blue Jays. There just isn't enough amounts to feed right now on the current roster. So bring up those guys into the mix. It just doesn't feel right. Maybe this will be a conversation in July, August. Right now, it's a little bit way too early to be thinking about bringing up top prospects. Well, I think that. If you are any one of those players, and I'm, I'm specifically really thinking about Ernie Clement right now, because that to me is like a you know just a guy that might be on the potential chopping block, even though he's doing well. Right, right. But like his seat is always going to be hot. Literally all yep. season long, yep. it's going to be hot. And if there's a time where he starts to slow down, and you're looking down there in the minors, and it is Addison Barcher who's doing really well. Well, I mean, this is our like fifth or sixth ranked prospect in our system. Right, we want right. to see this guy in the MLB. We want to see him do well. He's go. He's obviously hitting the ball well right now then boom it's immediate and he's up and and clement is down sort of thing daniel vogelbach people are talking about him saying i want the vogelbach experiment to be over (laughs) i mean like that's also another thing right like they have no ties to danny burgers whatsoever and they are not going to think twice about getting rid of him if he is slowing down and maybe joey Votto's down there doing really good or somebody who's got that first base out spencer horwitz down there doing really good he's actually popping the hell off exactly you know like one of those guys like i could totally see that i think that um you know they're gonna have some hesitancy bringing in some of these new faces to start but if as the season progresses if you're seeing a um i guess a um kind of a, a rhythm or, or tendency to have all these new guys start to inject this life like Yariel Rodriguez might be doing right now, like Ernie Clement, like David Schneider, then I, I hope that we are ready to pull the trigger in and just continue to, to ride the hot hand. Yeah, we, we got to see an opportunity for a job. Right now, there's no opportunity for a job, right? Where the Ariel, clear opportunity. That fifth spot, struggling, struggling, struggling. We're losing games. We're getting blown up into the fifth spot. You bring up Yariel, who's clearly ready. Clear job slot right there. Mm-hmm. And he won it so far. And it's got to be the same thing with the Blue Jays. Third base spot, second base spot. But there's four dudes right now that you feel comfortable playing out there, starting out there. Mm. And so right now, you know, you'd have to have like three drop off and need a clear need. So right now, that's it's a good problem to have, like I said. We got great depth in those spots in our system. So let's wait and see, guys. Let's take a look at that final game, the one that we've been referencing, the Sunday one, mm-hmm. where La Maquina went absolutely mm-hmm. insane, folks. This dude is a machine. Mm-hmm. We love him to death, everybody. Set, you want to play the graphic, or are you guys yeah. ready to do this? I'm getting ready, go, guys. Go. It's time. Graphic, it's time, guys, to crown the J of the week. That's right, everybody. It is La Maquina for J of the week. We talked about it on the show, uh, on the live play-by-play, and it is just too obvious, guys. He popped off 13 and two-thirds inning pitch. No earned runs. Mm. That's the key for me. He won two games for these Toronto Blue Jays out of the four they won this week. This guy's a certified ace. He popped off. I mean, what is there to say? Like, he is just so dominant right now, clearly. And we've, ta- we've heard Keegan Matheson talk about it. It's his season right now. Mm-hmm. This is the season of Jose Barrios, and I'm ready for it. Uh, and we need it, especially yeah. with the struggling pitching staff. Of course we need it, dude. If we did, if we had him 
uh, starting the way that he started previously. Because even last year, where he had a good year, he was starting rough. And yeah. the season prior, we obviously all know what happened there. Like, rough season for Jose Barrios. But if he was doing any of that, we would we would not be 8-8, eight and eight, you know? And no. we're kind of lucky to be 8-8 <laughs> eight eight right now. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, this guy is putting the team on his back every time he gets onto the mound. Uh, he, along with Justin Turner, are the two guys who are just single-handedly oh, carrying God. the Toronto Blue Jays squad right now. But we are so lucky to have Jose Barrios. Mm -hmm. uh, everything that he's doing, I am loving it. This is the beginning of what could be a Cy Young campaign for yeah. Barrios. I know it's way too early to say yeah. that, and I completely agree that that is an overreaction. But this is this is the stuff, this is the signs of, of somebody who's about to have a career year. Yeah, the eyeball test is really good. Real quick, shout out to Rafat Isaac mm -hmm. with the $2 super chat dono. Saying for Cy Young. Love the videos, by the way. Thank you, man. W's in the chat there for Rafat. Uh, and yeah, seriously, dude, it, it feels like this is the beginnings of that campaign for him. He should assuredly mm -hmm. be the pitcher of the week. And yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if as April goes on, he is the pitcher of the month for the mm -hmm. MLB. And speaking of uh, players of the week, players of the month, all that stuff, Justin Turner. Uh, wow. God, just look wow. at that. <laughs> look at all that red, guys. Not only is the eyeball test working, but the, the expected numbers are working as well. I mean, we, we spin the wheel, as you guys know, on the Blue Jays Today show. Nick picked Justin Turner twice. Little spoiler, won both categories. This guy's a lock, man. Where, where would we be? I know we say the same thing about Jose Barrios. Where would we be without him? Mm -hmm. Where would we be without Justin Turner? God, we could be a two and uh, we'd be like two and 14 right now. It, it, we'd be the White Sox record if we didn't have these two guys, man. It, it, we're so thankful. We're yeah, so Turner is incredible at baseball. And similarly, like, what is there to say other than, wow, OPS 1.095 right now? Mm -hmm. Do I expect that to continue? Yeah. Obviously not. But he is he is putting the squad on his back. And if we didn't have him, it would be rough mm -hmm. sledding. Because when you look over at that offense, everyone, as we keep referencing the top mm -hmm. three, the top three, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Not a single guy with an OPS over 700 right now not a single guy with an ops over 680 right now from yeah. springer guerrero and bichette somebody fact check me on this but like i wouldn't be surprised if you're looking at potentially the the worst collective top three in the mlb you know yeah. like usually no, you, real, you play your best hitters up there these are supposed to be our best hitters and they're looking like a seven eight nine in the lineup right now and it's just it is it is a tough watch because time and time again we're seeing you know, it, we're, we're seeing like one of the bottom of the lineup guys get on, yeah. and then it's Springer pop up, Guerrero strike out, and you know, uh, Boba shit ground out, right? So yeah. It, it, it's been a rough, rough watch so far. I mean, like, what needs to change here, and and is this going to change? Yeah. Well, yeah, it should change. If these guys are hitting this at the end of the year, uh, something is severely wrong. You know, there is something severely wrong uh, with something going on with these guys, and mm -hmm. one guy. You know, that I, I kind of wanted to bring up here was Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Obviously, he's always going to be the hottest topic right now on the Toronto Blue Jays. Because you look at the slash line here. 194 batting average. Gross. Striking out a lot. Gross. OPS bad. Slugging bad. On base. Actually, on base is pretty decent. The on base he's getting is, his walks is decent for where enough is, for where his batting yeah, exactly. average is. Exactly. I mean, you can say the same thing about George Springer. Like, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. roughly about 100 points up. Um, Boba Shett is never kind of an on-base no, guy, no, he's not. but they're, they're getting pitched tough. They're getting pitched hard and it's harder for them to kind of get up to gear. But Vladimir Guerrero Jr., the conversation has always been, well, he hits the ball so hard. Look at the expected numbers. I mean, hell, even look at last year. Mm -hmm. Look at those expected numbers. Look mm -hmm. at his 2021. Obviously they were phenomenal. Like, so what's the problem? Well, shout out to Joe Siddle once again, guys, and shout out to also Damon here. Uh, he tweets a lot about the Jays, and I really feel a lot of his, you know, he's a, he's pretty angry at the team a lot of the time, and so are we, dude. So are we. And, and part of that is Vladimir Guerrero Jr., how, why is it that he's getting all these expected numbers and not anything, any good results? And the, he's saying the conversation should be not, um, he's not unlucky anymore. That narrative needs to end, because why? Because Joe Settle brings it up and agrees with him that the mechanics and the swing path, there's a problem here. And Joe Settle talked about it. I think if you scroll down a little bit, he's talked about it literally on the first day of the season on why Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is struggling. He's not getting his hands proper in the right place 
for to get his barrel to connect with the ball. And he's still getting late. I mean, you can see him demonstrating it right there. Um, it's it's a problem. You know, even though he hits the ball super hard, it's on the ground. And we saw that in the, actually on Sunday's game. Two hard hit balls on the ground, gobbled up, throwing in the first, and he's out. And he's rolling over on a ton of pitches. So there needs to be mechanical change for Vlade to get back. And it's been like this for the last few seasons now. Yeah, 100%, dude. I mean, you could easily say that he's unlucky if, uh, you know, the, the year previous uh, we were looking at a 900 OPS and it was the exact same Sabre metrics to go along with it. And you say, okay, well, it's the start of the season. He's getting unlucky, mm. getting on top of it a little bit. But that's, that's going to change. But if those Sabre metrics have been the same, every single season yeah then you just can't say that anymore because the the mean the norm the average is well i'm a high 700 ops guy sometimes i get into the low hundreds uh, mm-hmm. but i hit the ball on the ground a lot and that's just simply what he does i mean the guy tops the baseball uh 36.7 percent of the time that's mm-hmm. just a bit too much mlb average is 32.8 percent of the time and Guerrero, you just got to be a little bit better than that, man. I mean, yeah. crown ball about 50% of the time That's for wild. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. So, yeah, the guy absolutely drills the baseball, but he's just getting on top of it yeah. all the time, grounding out all the time. That has got to change. And and it's, it's sad because something like that is a pretty decent mechanical shift. You know, like mm. I'm no hitting expert here. But, you know, now you got to completely change from getting on top of the baseball to getting through the baseball. And that is very difficult when every day you're playing baseball mm-hmm. and now you got the Yankees and now you're on a bus to Boston and now you're flying to, to California. Yeah. Right? Like, that's a difficult thing to change mid-season. You're, you're supposed to do that in the offseason. You yeah. Know? And, and you're supposed to do that in spring training and test it out. But for whatever reason, I don't know, Vladdy. Of course I don't. I don't know why he hasn't seen this or maybe he doesn't feel like he needs to or he wants to trust his process. You know, maybe it's uncomfortable for him because that's another thing too. Going through a whole mechanical change can make you very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, it will be until you put it into your muscle memory. So I don't know why he hasn't made the change. Joe Siddle's been bringing it up for years. I, it's one of those questions where you got to ask Vlad, like, you know, has anyone ever talked to him about this? Well, they, okay, look, like, dude, if nobody has talked to him about this, then that is on the developmental and training staff yeah. of the Toronto Blue Jays. So and whoever is dealing with that needs to get fired because I agree. That's, that's just terrible. So assuming they did talk to him about it, why isn't he making the change? Or why isn't people why aren't people going to change it? Is it like, oh, it, you know, it's Vladdy. We don't really we don't really bother him. He's too talented. It's like, well, no, he's a player. I mean, you got Edwin and Canacion on the bench talking to him. Mm-hmm. Like, I actually love that, by the way. Edwin, a player to player, a guy who's done it before, talking to him recently, a guy who's done it before. Talking to him, I would love to see what he's got to say, you know, because Joe Siddle's a broadcaster and like he's not on the field talking to him. Mm-hmm. But I want someone to echo what what Joe's talking about. Well, the fact of the matter is, it's not good enough right now, and it has to change. And if you want to earn that big contract yep. that you were supposed to get paid in two years' time, then you've got to be a lot better. And again, yeah. like that's just from a personal standpoint. This team also needs you to be better too, dude, because. I don't know, like I imagine the leash is going to be relatively long, but there is going to be a time in the season if this continues, and I don't think it's going to continue like this all year long. I do think that eventually we're yeah. going to get to a, you know, a hot stretch and he should be better because, you know, if we're if we're using the same logic, typically he has those saber metrics, he's like a high 700 low 800 player, but if it doesn't get better, then eventually there's going to be a time where you don't occupy the second or third spot in the lineup every day. And that is going to be a very interesting place for Toronto Blue Jays fans and for John Schneider and just everyone as a whole to, to potentially watch that. I hope it never comes to that, dude. But wow, See, the drama if it did. You know what? I would actually hope it did because that means someone would be warranting that spot. You know, right now there's nobody, and you could make an argument kind of visual, you know, yeah. Dave Schneider, but no, they're never going to bat over Vladimir Guerrero Jr. this early in the season. But if it's if they're getting regular playing time and it's August and Vladdy's OPS is 680, and David Schneider's 850 and Bijo's 850. And it's like, okay, well, now we change. Yeah. Like, clearly, you're not doing it. Now we change. So I actually would like that because that would mean, hopefully, more runs for the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, yeah. Again, I, I mean, I'm hoping that he just turns it around and adjusts and we don't even need to have that conversation. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, right now, as it has been for every series, the top three is just not good enough. They need to be better. Can't be all on mm. Justin mm-hmm. freaking Turner.
Time to look at the upcoming series, guys. But before we do, a massive shout out to Greta. Shout out to Greta, guys. It is freaking game time. If you are interested at all in watching uh, any of the Toronto Blue Jays games, going to a bar, Greta, they're opening up on April 26th. They got a bunch of arcade games. They got the sports there. They have like multiple different levels where it's like you can do yeah. arcade stuff. You can go watch your sports. We are going to be going there and doing a bunch of different events, everybody. So we're going to be inviting you guys there. We're going to be recording like a show like this there or watching the game there, doing a whole watch party. Going to be having some giveaways. Oh, yeah. We don't know the exact dates yet, but I can tell you assuredly, April 26th, mm -hmm. Greta opens up and we are going to be partying there, watching the Toronto Blue Jays all summer long. Yeah, let's let the games begin, folks. So, and speaking of games, we got some big games coming up today, tonight. And tomorrow and at 3 o'clock on Wednesday, the New York Yankees, they're back. They're back real quick. They're in town in Toronto, and they're hot as hell. Uh, I want to flash over quickly to the standings, uh, and we could see, guys, that New York, top of it right now, 12-4. and four. They are clearly the ALE's dominant team right now. I'm sad I kind of pulled that bet away mm -hmm. because it's looking really good without Garrett mm -hmm. Cole still. Baltimore, 9-6. and six. They're where they're supposed to be. Boston, 9-7. and seven. Tampa, 9-7. and seven. Blue Jays, 8-8. Eight eight. The one positive thing you could pull from all this is that we're not getting buried. We're no. four games from the lead, but if you look at the wild card, we're one and a half from the wild card. Obviously, it's way too early to be looking at wild card standings right now, mm -hmm. but it's good to know that we're not getting buried, and we could easily, you know, after two hot weeks, we could be second in this mm -hmm. division. So that's, that's good. So I'm not concerned. We're lucky to be here. Let's start playing some better ball, and it all starts with the Yankees this upcoming week. Yeah, let's look at game one tonight, everybody. Uh, we've got Chris Bassett on the mound going up against Gil. Gil mm. has been really good at baseball. Three ERA, 14 strikeouts so far. Have we ever faced Gil before? Are we, we good did. against this guy? We got murdered. Well, we got can, murdered. Can you go to the matchup? So I want to yeah. see like what we what. We, Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we got actually I've got okay. his line right here. That's for, terrible. I got his line for a little segment coming up later, but we faced him on April 7th. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, six, eight strikeouts, uh, two earned runs, and four and one third. So, like, we got a little bit off him, but only two hits, mm. uh, two runs. And yeah, we, we definitely needed a little bit more pop, uh, pop mm. against this guy. And he's going to be going up against Chris Bassett, who, granted, had a very good outing. Last time around against the Seattle Mariners, mm -hmm. uh, has not faced the New York Yankees yet this season. So maybe he can continue some good fortune. But this one, you're going to have to hope that Bassett gives you what he got. Gill's already done it against the Jays this year. So it's going to be close. What is the New York Yankees like uh, history against Bassett? Okay, so you got Stanton, mm -hmm. who's done pretty well, limited at bats. Mm -hmm. Judge actually hasn't done that good. Rizzo, not that. Okay, so you know what? A lot of the guys uh, that they rely on. Not, I mean, Verdugo, right. Verdugo and Trevino has done pretty well, but everybody else has been kind of mid in the limited time frame. So. And you also got, you know, Volpe is hot as hell. I know, right he's now. going crazy. Vol Volpe's yeah. going crazy. He's now batting at the top lineup. You got Volpe, you got uh, uh, Juan Soto, you got Judge, you got uh, John Carlos Stanton who's doing well, and then Rizzo, <laughs> yeah. he's starting to cook a little bit right now. That's scary for me. Ugh. I mean, I'll say it right now, guys. I think we're going to lose this one. Right. I mean, clearly, if I remove myself from the series, remove the Blue Jay fandom, I think the Blue Jays are pretty fortunate to grab one, mm. it, especially with the pitching match matchups you're going to see coming up. This is their worst guy, and he dummied us, right? Four and one-thirds. I think we lose this slightly, mm. just slightly, because uh, I think Gil's going to do pretty good. He's going to continue off his performance. Well, okay, we, we set it off the top of the show. The Toronto Blue Jays are a four-run team, maybe. So yeah. if we're using that same logic, everybody, <laughs> we can hope and anticipate the Toronto Blue Jays will get us four runs. Uh -huh. Do we anticipate that Chris Bassett in the bullpen is going to hold the New York Yankees lineup to less than four runs? That's the question. Mm, that, That's the question. I man. know. I, I feel like Bassett's not going to be as dominant. I think he'll give a couple here and there. It's just such a hot lineup right now. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And then you do have the good bullpen. So maybe I think we're not going to get four runs, though. I think we'll maybe get three or two. I think it's going to be a really tight, low scoring ball game tonight. And I'm going to say that I'm, I'm still sticking with that like, Gil's going to win. It's going to be like a one run game. Well, I'm going to go that we win this one, but it is just a bias thing alone, mm -hmm. folks, because uh, we do need to, we really do need to win two out of three here. We do. Uh, you, when you're yes. at home, you got to be dominating. 
We were, you know, we probably should have swept the Colorado Rockies if possible. That's not what happened. So now you got to take two out the New York Yankees. And this is an important one because after that, you're going to have Yusei Kikuchi going up against Carlos Rodon. It doesn't get any easier. Rodon, terrible year last year. This yeah. year, he's turning it on, though. He's starting out really hot. Yeah. Kind of looking like they're Jose Burrios at this point. 1.72 ERA. Uh, we've had a couple guys do well against him in the past. A couple guys do really bad against him. But once again, it comes down to the fact that their lineup, just a lot hotter than our lineup right now. Kikuchi, though, looking pretty good. This one's closer. Yeah. I think this is closer. I think this, this feels very, very close. I almost want to flip-flop again. Like, I almost want to go, if we are going to grab one, it would be tonight. Because I'm looking at this one. And, yeah, Rodon has dominated the Blue Jays in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, Barshow only has two at-bats. Uh, Sam Guerrero's only got four at-bats. But, damn, dude. And, you know you know what? I am going to flip-flop. I'm going to flip-flop. Because I think that Kikuchi, he's already faced the, the Yankees. Maybe they have a better read this time around. And, and same would go for the Blue Jays. I'm going to I'm gonna flip-flop. Mm -hmm. I'm a flip-flopper. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to say we win tomorrow uh, tonight. And we lose tomorrow. Because Rodon's hot. Maybe he's figured something out. I'm not too familiar if any Yankee fans are out there. What did he do to change? Did he change something? Maybe there's something that we're not aware of. Mm -hmm. The Blue Jays got to adjust to. They've already seen Kikuchi. Maybe they have a better approach against him this time around, more patient. Because he was throwing the ball out of the zone a lot, and they were chasing. Mm -hmm. So maybe they have a better approach. So, yeah, the, it, I feel like these first two series, you got you to gotta grab one. You got because the next one's gonna be tough, guys. Well, yeah. that's, that's the thing, man. Like, I want to predict that we're gonna win two of three here, but yeah. you know, I, I just I can't bet on Kevin Gosman right now. And let's go over to that mm -hmm. third game because that's what it's gonna be. It's yeah, it's Kevin Gosman and it's against Marcus Stroman. Now, if we're gonna use the logic that we had at the beginning of this show when we were talking about Kevin Gosman, mm -hmm. we're not worried about the season, but as he said, well, I gotta get my eight starts in. This yeah. is start five, five. for yeah. him which would mean that he's probably not going to be where he needs to be. <laughs> yeah. And therefore, it is very hard to bet on him, especially because Marcus Stroman kicked our ass he kicked like a week ass. and a half ago. So, I mean, for me, this is a, a simple loss. I really hope yeah. that I'm wrong, and I really hope that this is the way that Kevin Gosman bounces back because yeah. I think that the momentum and the confidence that you would get for being able to go in there and, and shut down Volpe and Soto and Judge. Like, if you can do that, then you can do anything. But it's just very difficult for me to bet on that right now. So I do think that we are going to lose this last one, which means that for me, if we're going to win this series, you got to win tonight, mm -hmm. and you got to win with the Yusei Kikuchi. Yeah, the cro it's a very clear crossroads right now, guys. If you win this series against the Yankees, you now go down the path of, we can compete with the best. Mm. We are we are warming up to this season. We're pitching one of some of our best pitchers right now, other than Jose Barrios. We got our depth back. We can take care of a hot New York Yankee team. Or if you lose or get swept, it's no one's going to look at us. They're going to look at the Yankees. They're going to look at their, if we get swept, that 15 and four record. They're going to go, these guys are dominating right now. They're running away with the division. We have to stop them. We almost got to help the other guys in our division too catch up. We got to catch up. You know, and take at least one game away from them and move ourselves within three of the first place uh, I, spot. Man, I also think, too, like this series especially, because you have such hard competition, this is one of those ones where you need the offense to pick up a big, bit of the slack. Chris Bassett hasn't had the best start to the season, so you could argue he's struggling a bit. Obviously, Kevin Gosman's struggling a little bit. And these guys are looking hot. Yep. The top three in the order. I'm looking at you guys again. Oh my God. I don't think that, you know, because if we're if we're talking about this team as being four runs maybe, I don't think that we win two out of three with four runs a game. No, no, I just no, don't think we no, do because no. I think that they're going to get to our pitchers more than that. The Yankees are going to put up six or, or, or seven or eight on us in one or maybe two of these games, which means that you've got to do more than four runs a game. And I'll be honest, dude, I think I might even be overselling it. I think that we're probably averaging lower than that on the season. <laughs> we can <laughs> look at the course, offensive yeah, yeah. stats after yeah. that. But but right now, it feels like, yeah, we're, we're a four-run team. And if you're going to win some games against the New York Yankees, you've got to average more than that yeah. in this series. So I think it does come down to me that this offense has got to turn it around. Justin Turner's doing everything in his power. Kevin Bishop is mm. doing everything in his power. Kirk, are you going to build off of Sunday? Danny Jansen, are we going to get mm. you back? And how about those top three again? Please, let's get going. So let's talk about that offense real quick. What do we need to see? Because I know I didn't want to bring this up uh, to dwell on it too long, but John Schneider with the whole offense, lineup kind of crap. Who's who's a must-start for you in this series? 
We're going back to Varsho. He must uh, start again. And who's must bench? Well, so what do we got? yeah, I mean, like, well, if they don't start Varsho today, I don't know what the hell you're doing because he right. sat yesterday. Like, that'd just be completely ridiculous. Uh, I would like to see Kirk again because he had a good game yesterday. I know that you're trying to give him some rest, mm-hmm. but he got a couple off days, you know, from on Thursday and then on Saturday there. So maybe that's enough and he can go here. Uh, and then maybe he'll get Danny Jansen back later in this series. Yeah. I think that's important as well. Obviously, Babe Schneider in the lineup as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And Kevin Kiermeyer on the bench as much as possible, guys. I mean, we can do this segment right now, folks, uh, if, if you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the betting segment, you want to do that? Let's, let's go All over right. to betting yeah, segment. Yeah, uh, quick shout out here to Betway, everyone. Oh, Time go? for a quick shout out to Betway. <laughs> Betway is the best place to make all of your sports bets on all of your favorite teams. Betway is also in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Must be 19 years older to participate. And guys, please bet responsibly. Now, back to the content. Shout out to Betway, everybody. They are absolutely phenomenal. This is the segment where we will give you guys something to bet on on Betway. And my bet is real nice and it's real simple, folks. We are going to be taking under on a Kevin Kiermeyer hit today. If he plays today... I just don't think that he's going to get himself a hit. Now, I know yeah. that he had a decent game on Friday, I think and, it was. And I got a hit, I think, yesterday, too. But it was like a fluky, off-the-foot, like, infield single. That's the thing. I'm just not on it right now, guys. I, I don't think that he's all the way back. I want him to be all the way back. He's just not there right now. I think that you got to ride with Varsha, or you got to ride with David Schneider. And if he is in the lineup, then I'm going to be betting the under, especially against Gil, who's doing really good. Yeah, and that's exactly where my bet is going to lie, guys. I'm actually going Gil over on the strikeouts. Last time up, like we just looked at, he mm-hmm. got eight strikeouts against the Toronto Blue Jays. And our offense, unless they prove something here, will probably get at least six again against Gil. He might get a little bit more length this time around. So he only went four and one thirds and got eight strikeouts. So that gives me a little bit more confidence. Like if he can give us a little bit more length, Mm -hmm. then he's probably locked in for six strikeouts right there. I hate to do it, but it is what it is. Uh, I see you're looking up some MLB teams. I want I want to see like what are what is our average runs per game? Where where is the the numbers to say that? We're saying time for a quick shout out to Betway. Betway is the best place to make all of your sports bets on all of your favorite teams. Betway uh, Betway is also in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. (laughs) Must be 19 years older to participate. And guys, please bet responsibly. Now back to the content. That's a Betway again. Yeah, my my streaming thing is a little bit frozen. So apologies, everybody uh where the hell are we how do i find that information i feel like we've got if you go to baseball bad. reference i think you can find it per game oh runs per game right there yeah i know but we can't we don't see each other here i don't know if somebody can give me that information that'd be great guys i want to know how many runs we're averaging per game i would anticipate though it's probably like three and a half or something like that I, but I, uh i think i could find it right here uh if i go over here uh, are we a four run team that's what i want to know <laughs> i don't know if we are <laughs> I'm not sure. But either way, we're going to need more than that against the New York Yankees. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. It's 2023. I'm going to go over 2024. Uh, runs per game. We are. What are we ranked in the MLB? What are we low? ranked? Yeah, we're 3.81. Okay. So just under four. Just under a four-run team. We were pretty close, everybody. 3.81 well, runs for the Toronto Blue Jays. That's not enough. We're right down there with the Miami Marlins, who have barely won any baseball games this year. And we've given up 4.94. So that's the losing formula. We're lucky to be 8-8, eight eight, guys. We, uh, literally. We, that's actually yeah. that's, per- that's a perfect statistic right there to show that we are lucky to be 8-8. Eight eight. Yep. 3.8 run, uh, uh, runs come in. 4.9 are given up. We got to be better than that against the New York Yankees. It's as simple as that, guys. Yeah, facts. All right, let's go to the last segment of this, guys. Uh, you know what it is. It's time to spin that wheel. The spinning fortune, baseball, colorful, future determining, stat analyzing, and uh, it's a wheel that we spin every week. It is, in fact, a wheel that we spin let's every go. single week. As you guys know, we've been here for a while. The wheel is in full mm-hmm. swing mm-hmm. right now. Uh, it was spin. my my week last week. Mm. Uh, I took Adam for a little bit of a ride, but he did get one off of me. It's Shoot. abundantly clear that uh, <laughs> Justin Turner is the guy to pick in any offensive category. The guy yeah. is just too good right now. And, uh, and realistically, if anything pitching comes up, then... Probably La Maquina is where it's at, unless it's K for nine, and then you could make an yeah. argument. Yeah, right now you, you, got, you got Kikuchi actually leading the, the team in K for nine for the starters. Uh, and yeah. then it is Jose Barrios, uh, but you never know. You never know. It, it's not a bad bet. Well, it's your week this week. Let's see Let's what we're going to get, everyone. I really hope that we get Jay Killer because there's a lot of good ones this week, and I always right. love taking that category. But we, see what we shall get. see. 
Go past the bonus come on, player. Come on, come there on. it is. And that's a simple okay. one, man. Yeah. Well, Feels I'm, like we know. I'm going first. I will be taking Justin Turner right there, everybody. That's easy as hell. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. It's so funny. In the past, OPS is one I'd always like, kind of just give up because yeah, any week anyone could pop off, especially when some guys are doing well. But it is no. the only one. No, no. Literally, Justin Turner is the guy right now. And uh, look, this is a tough. It's a really tough to go second on this one because there's no clear answer for me. I can't take Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I just don't trust him. Right Right now, like, you know, do I go as crazy as like George Springer or Boba Shed? I don't know if I trust that either necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you do here, right? Like, do you go crazy with Babe Schneider? Does he get enough at bats? I don't you know. Go, yeah. Do I go with Cavern Biggio? Does he get enough at bats? Like, yeah, like, it doesn't feel right to pick the top guys. No. It just doesn't. Well, it, it just feels like a complete shot in the dark. Sophie's saying take Springer. I know that you're That's a big Springer fan, <laughs> Sophie. I know that you love George Springer to death. I love him too, but like, is he gonna get a higher OPS than Justin Turner this week? Like, basically what I'd be yeah. asking for is you gotta pop a couple, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. I guess he's got the capability to do so. I go crazy and take Dalton Varsho though. Like, maybe Dalton Varsho, maybe Dalton Varsho goes on a tear this he, he could, he could. You know? I know it's not a nice place to be. No, no, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just not a place to, not a great place to be at all. Uh, you know what? Screw it, dude. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Springer gotta, or Varsha, Springer or Varsha. This is a tough one. Yeah, that's kind of what I felt like would be it. <sighs> they should not a bad show. With a couple the... people are saying Springer. I'll go Springer. We just got to hope yeah. on the Springer dinger, everybody. That's all it comes down to. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I, that just feels like a lock for you. Until proven otherwise, Until Justin proven Turner is going to be win winning that category consistently. So. Yeah. That's tough, guys, but I'm going to go George Springer. <laughs> Carl saying Kirk. He's not doing that yet, sadly. Yeah. He not be doing that. Well, apologies for those in the video. Like, for whatever reason, the, the programming's really slow and won't actually show the results here. So just bear with us. Let's see what the next category is. All right, getting close to bonus player again. It's not going to be, though. It's going to be K for batters. batters. Ooh. K batters right now. Let's take a look. That's an interesting Let's one. We haven't look. had that one yet this year. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. A couple are guys we? are coming to mind we'll right now. Close this to get a little more speed. Who's coming to mind, everybody? Who K's oh. on the Toronto my, Blue Jays? My computer is frozen right now. Yeah, can you look at Thank you. Uh, let me take a look right now at this Toronto Blue Jays player stats, everyone. Who do we got? Who do we got, guys? You let us know. Let us know. Uh, okay, so the leaders in strikeouts so far, Kevin Kiermaier leading the Toronto Blue Jays, Kevin Biggio right behind him, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Dalton Varsho, mm, Bo Bichette, mm. Isaiah kind of I mean, those feel like the, the suspects for me. Okay, you know what? I'll let you take this one first, and uh, I think I know which one you're going to pick, but I, feel, I don't feel too bad about uh, some other options. Okay, um, interesting. Uh, I, you know what, guys? I'll be honest. I'm between Kevin Kiermaier and Vladimir mm -hmm. Guerrero Jr. That's that's exactly that's the That's literally ones. who I'm between right now because, you know, Guerrero just has not looked good at all, and and he's going to get a lot of at-bats. Kiermaier has had about half the at-bats as Vladdy, and he's so he's just striking out like mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. It really comes down to do I think Kiermaier is going to get enough playing time? Um... You know what? I don't think I. I don't think he will because I think we're the the book is gonna start to be out right now. Right. We need to sit him a bit. I'm gonna go with Guerrero. I think okay. I'm gonna go with Guerrero. He's just gonna get more playing time, and I don't think he's there. That's very fair. That's very fair. Um, I know a lot of people are saying Kiermaier right now. I, I think I, I think that they're gonna change right now. You know. I, I I feel like I have to go with Kiermaier. Then he's been terrible. He's yeah. been terrible. I'm going to go Kiermaier. Yeah. I'm going to go Kiermaier. No, it's, again. He gets 15 at-bats, which he might just He's going to strike out 15 he will, times. He will strike out. <laughs> that's will an strike exaggeration, out. but there is going to be a lot of strikeouts right there. Kiermaier's just not locked uh, in. Last one. Final category. Adam will go first. What's it going to be? Yeah, again, no, not showing anything up here right here, folks. We'll have to just remember. And we've got... Home runs home for the Blue Jays. This is... All right, there you go. It's a coin flip. It's a coin flip. Who's going to hit one this week? That's what you're asking. <laughs> Who's going to hit one? God dang. <laughs> I mean, surfers, uh, Sophie's saying Turner. Yeah, maybe. Let's see. What do we got, guys? Who's hitting a homer for the Jays this week? 
Marshall, who'd you pick? I wish I could find. Uh, I see. picked Springer for OPS. Springer for OPS. Yeah. Vladdy. I mean, Vladdy could hit one. Vladdy could hit one. I mean, he's leading the team. Yankees. He likes the home run for Yankees. Maybe he does. Vladdy. He's leading the team in homers. All right, you're going Guerrero. You're going Guerrero. Uh, okay. Adam's going Guerrero. Um, uh, how many does <laughs> Turner have? One. Like one, one home run so yeah. far. Yeah, I mean, Turner's not a bad shout. One home run so far. Davis has two. Springer has two. Varsho has two. Yeah, I'm just worried about going doubling down on Springer because, like, mm -hmm. I really am concerned about that. I mean, if if he has. You know, home runs. He will get the highest OPS, and like that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But you know, he could also just have a terrible week, and then I just lose outright, and that's yeah. just not a good spot to be in. I mean, Varsho's not awful either. Bichette says Scott. Scott oh Bichette. yeah, a lot Babes. of people. <laughs> I, I I just I don't know, guys. This is such a terrible. This is the new Jays. Where home remember home runs was so easy. Simeon or Vladdy? I know. A lot. That's literally what it boiled down to. At this point, though, like nobody has any idea. Who's going to get a hold of the baseball? Like, I don't know, man. Like, if Vladdy hits it, it's over the wall. <laughs> yeah. It. He gets I it in mean, the air. I get, you know what? I, don't, I know you're saying Bo Bichette. I don't know if I believe in Bo Bichette, Scott. I really don't know if I believe in him this week. I guess I'm going to double down on, on George Springer. That's a risky strategy. Yeah, but if he has yeah. a big week, then I'm going to go crazy. That's what it comes down to. Wow. All right, that's, All right. that's, that's the wheel, category. everybody. Uh, I really like your picks for this one a lot. I I'm like not them. super happy with where I'm at, but I mean, this Toronto Blue Jays team, anything could happen at any mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is the week that George Springer turns it around. Maybe we win a series against the Yankees. Who knows? You never know. Guys, that is the Blue Jays Today Show on this beautiful Monday afternoon. If you enjoyed the content, guys, I really do appreciate it. If you hit that like button, smash the subscribe button too, guys. And also, hopefully it plays. Big shout out to the Patreon members. Mm. You guys are absolutely awesome. It's $3 a month to become a Patreon. And our shout out to our YouTube members too. Lots of different YouTube memberships there. But look at all those absolute legends. We love every single one of you guys. Thank you so much for watching, folks. And as always, Go, go Jays, go! go! Oh!